Well, welcome back to the Proving Grounds. Got a lot of stuff going on here this week. As you can see, Tater is up in the air because I'm finally getting his drive shaft shortened. That's going out in a couple days and should be back in and ripping by next week. I'm really looking forward to that because I want to take it out and just, you know, beat on it a little bit. So we're also working on mirror cart and my garage is a disaster right now because I got Tater in here too. But as you can see, I'm starting to get the axle mounted up. And so now I'm working on making that pivot on the bottom so that I can tension my chain. And then once I get that sorted out, I'm going to get the motor mounted. And then we're getting pretty close to getting it fired up and making it move the wheels a little bit. So let's get at it. that this is the bottom side. And so I want this thing to pivot on the bottom and then on the top I'll have some, well, the top, I'll have uh, two attachments that I can tighten the nut on and move this thing slightly back and forth so I can tension the chain. So what I want to do is basically weld these brackets on the bottom and I'm going to take this pipe and bore a hole in it so it'll fit this bolt through it and then I'll cut some short pieces and basically this piece will mount to the frame and then the bolt will go through these brackets through this and then a nut on the other side. So I'm going to go bore a hole in this on the lathe and then we'll cut it to the size I want and then make some brackets and mount that to the frame. All right so we got a couple little I guess bushings with a nice tight tolerance, like almost no play at all, which is what I wanted. I want this thing to sit firm. These are going to be drilled out. I'm going to weld this into these brackets sticking out through the outside. So I made all these brackets and I cut them out with my angle blaster. And I know that they are not exactly the same height because I cut them out with my angle blaster. And I want all my holes to be in exactly the same spot so these things are really well aligned. So there's a little trick I learned. If you just take and weld these together with a couple little tacks, you can then drill through all of them in the same spot. And then while it's still tacked together, you can actually sand down all the uneven spots. That's what we're going to do. Got some tacks on there. You can drill my holes out right through there. Sand everything nice. I'm gonna round these edges as well, and they'll all look like I made them on a water jet or something. That's not right. Who did this? Did you do this? Oh, of course not. 
Did you do this? It was you. I knew it. Well, are you gonna fix it? You better fix it, because that's wrong. All right, well, let's see what you can make. Well, that's much better. Now they both match. I can't fault her too much. I mean, she is blind and deaf, so the fact that, you know, she put all this together in the first place is pretty impressive. Anyway. So now, these parts here are going to fit onto the frame rail. And the other end is going to mount on here. So it's time to get this engine mounted. I got it propped up with some things. And basically what I'm trying to do is make sure that the engine is level with the axle in the back. So that's zero. Well, it changes every time I set it down, but within 0.1 degrees or 0 0.05 degrees, which I, what I was seeing before. Yep. Yeah, now it's zero within 0 0.05. Like you're good. So we're going to call that level. The next thing is making sure that the sprocket on the engine is going to line up with the sprocket on your rear end because you don't want your chain flying off. So taking this straight edge and lining it up with the front sprocket. It's just grazing the rear sprocket. And if I check the other side, Kind of difficult to do with one hand. Same thing. So I think we're pretty well in line. It looks really straight. So I think that we won't have a problem with the chain skipping off of there. So before I mount this frame that I just built, I'm going to get some mounts on the engine connected to the frame. And then we'll get this mounted to the frame as well after the engine's mounted. All right, so we got our axle mounted on there permanently now. And I'm working on the motor mounts. I got one motor mount tacked in down here. And then I'm making one for each side to go from here down to the frame. And then once that's mounted, this motor is, is mounted. So that's pretty exciting. And then as you can see with my axle box, <laughs> since it's adjustable, I can tension my chain. And that will look way less sloppy once it's tensioned. All right, motor's attached. Mounts are almost entirely welded on, so once I'm ready, I'm going to pull the motor off, weld the mounts completely on. Um, but I got some more frame to fit around that first. Uh, so we'll get into that in the next video. Man, it's already doing wheelies and ain't even running yet. So before I end this one off, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten the frame. Because this thing's pretty long. And uh, I don't really have a plan for reverse so the shorter this thing is, the easier it's going to be to turn around when I get stuck against some trees or something. And also it'll have a shorter turning radius. So as you can see, I marked off already on here. I'm going to take out from the outside here to this side. And I'm going to take out six inches total and just move the whole front end back six inches.
it. Would you look at that? This thing is two hops and a skip from ripping. And I can't wait. Really appreciate you guys stopping by. We got the frame shortened, got the motor mounted, got the axle mounted. Next time we're gonna build some suspension for this thing and hopefully get it sitting on all four wheels. And then we gonna rip. So come on back. Make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see some more. We'll see you next time on Proven's Garage.